This 2 gigabyte verbatim USB stick stopped working and now I've got to get all the data back. Zoom in a little bit there, all our pins for our USB connector look good, there's no cracks in our memory chip. Solder joints look very good. Got no missing components. Uh, let's have a look. The microcontroller, which has a sticker on it. And it looks like we've got a manufacturing date here. 2009, December 04. That's pretty good. It's lasted 15 years. And the early memory is much better quality than it is today because they were using single or double um, bits per cell. These days it's much cheaper, cheaper and nastier. So it's lower quality now. I want to take a look under this microcontroller, this little quality control sticker that's blocking the model of the, the chip. Be nice to know what we're dealing with. Especially if we have to do a chip off, we need to know what controller this is. And what's hiding under here? Oh, you don't see these very often. So it's an ITE chip, Integrated Technology Express, and I just don't really see them that often. Uh, there's only about 10 of these controller models in existence that I know of. I don't know if the company still makes these chips. I don't know a lot about the company. At least this model, the IT1167E, is one of the more common ones out there. So hopefully that means it's going to be easier to solve. So for checking all the voltages around this controller chip, this microchip, it's Better if I have the data sheet, which I do, and I'll show you. So, just like the data sheet, I've orientated this chip so that pin number one, they're using this little circle here to represent pin one. And the first pin we see, <clears throat> REG18 out. Well, that's the regulator for 1.8 volts. Most of these chips have uh, internal voltage regulators because USB ports are 5 volts, but the little microchips, they operate at much smaller voltages. So if we test pin 1, we have our 1.8 voltage out working. So good to see that that regulator is working. Now F1IO, I'm not sure what that means. The next one is the second regulator and that's the 3.3 voltage. So let's see if that's working. And it is, we've got 3.3 volts. Now we've got a test enable pin. Uh, pin number five is a write protection switch. So this is so that you can block the ability to write to the USB and make it read only. That's not important. Uh, LED, I don't think there is an LED on this one, but if there was, um, it is going to somewhere. Where's that? Pin six, one, two, three, four, five, six. It does go out somewhere has 3.3 volts. I can't remember. Was there an LED on the other side? I'll look later. Okay. Pin number seven, AVDD33. AV is analog voltage and it's a 3.3 volts. So even though this is a digital component, they still have analog devices and they need to separate the voltage for the analog components, separate them from our digital components like the input output operations of the USB and the and the NAND controller chip. So uh, things like the LED in this crystal would be analog devices. Let's have a look at that. And we do have 3.3 volts for analog devices. Uh, DP and DM. So that's your data positive, data um, minus, so negative. And that will be connected to our USB connector pin. So if I know where that is, I can do a check later and see if they are broken or still talking to the um, USB plug. Um, AV analog SS, so that's the ground pin. We won't see any voltage here. That should be the ground. Um, now you got XT, XT, ALO, XT, um, ALI. Well, that's crystal. That's where their way of saying crystal uh, output and crystal input. 0 0.83, 0 0.77. So they should be coming up 
yeah, they are. They're going into resistors. So your little crystals here, there's your voltages. Is that oscillating at 12 megahertz? Well, unless I hook it up to the scope, I won't know, but maybe I should check that that crystal is functioning. We'll get to that later. Uh, pin number 13, if we have a look, now we're in the domain of the NAND memory chip. So remember, there's a lot of pins on, on the NAND memory chip. It's also got 48 pins. It doesn't use all 48, but we've got a lot of pins going to that uh, memory chip to communicate with storing and reading data from it. Now, unless I use a, um, uh, a digital scope, I, I probably won't know um, if, if this is working or not. But we can check some pins. I mean, we got the ground pin there at 16. Um, these are all pins for we got a VDD18 at pin 22. So pin number 22 is this one, and it should be 1.8 volts. Let's have a look. Okay, well then, it's providing the 1.8 volt, which is a, usually a core voltage. Now we're into the input outputs. We've also got a VDD, so the digital. Let's go back to the uh, AVD and VDD. So this is our digital voltage for digital components and yes we are getting our 3.3 volts now the rest of these are also NAND um, input output operation pins communication and let's have a look at pin number 37 down to 48 so same thing again not a lot I can test um, we'll have a look at let's go to pin 43 which is the digital voltage 3.3 volts so um, let's see, so 37, 38, 38, okay, so that'll be this pin here, be careful, don't want to short them, let's go up the top here, 3.3, good, and we got our regulator 5.0 input, so this will be our power, 5 volts coming from the actual USB port, at 47, pin 47, let's just, oops, sorry, very small. It's a bit under here, but that might be to do with the um, the way I'm using my lab power supply. Okay, so I'm happy with that. Um, so I'm just going to check the data positive pin, which is hard for you to see, but this side here. So this is the USB connector, and let's hear it beep. Perfect, and then we'll check the data minus. I'm just going to check that there's a connection. Okay, perfect. So as much as I'm going to do here with the electronics, they all look good. And it's probably the little NAND memory chip now. So we're at the stage of a chip off for data recovery. Let's go do that. Okay, so I've just connected my oscilloscope to the crystal. We're going to check to make sure it is operating correctly. Uh, there's the probe, go up to the scope, and we're getting a nice sine wave. And if we get a bit closer, you can see the 12 megahertz signal down the bottom right for the frequency. So that's working correctly. Now it's time for a chip off. Let's do a chip off. We'll get this little microchip off, this little memory NAND. The chip's reading at 5 megabytes a second. We'll return the data to the customer. If you've got any questions, leave them in the comments, and I'll see you guys in the next video.